there's a lot of questions about the age of accountability. Even though that terminology isn't found in the scripture, is there a certain level of spiritual maturity required for a person to be accountable before God? Well, that's obviously a rel very relevant question. A lot of parents, for example, have a lot of questions about that. A lot of kids end up with questions about that. <clears throat> a lot of kids that once were kids but aren't kids anymore have questions about that. The uh, term accountable does show up in the uh, New American Standard. Uh, it's interesting in, in Romans chapter uh, 3, it talks about how in, in verse 19 it says, we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law that every mouth may be closed, all the world may become accountable to God. Because by works of the flesh, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. So the idea, first of all, is that the world is, is accountable. First of all, the first people under the law were the Jews, or Israelites. Then uh, God extended it through the gospel to the whole world. See, so that the whole world may become accountable, that every mouth may be closed. So <clears throat> accountability is a scriptural issue. Now, tied to that is something called knowledge of sin. See, a person actually has to know what sin is in order to be accountable, okay? To him who knows the right thing to do and doesn't do it, to him it's sin. If you don't know, then it's not sin. Same way the, the scripture says that trans, sin is transgression, King James Version, transgression of the law. You have to know what you're doing in order to, for that to be operative. So how old does a person have to be? Another factor is the, um, um, the tree in the Garden of Eden was not the tree of the knowledge of right and wrong. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. No, your dog knows it's not supposed to be on the couch, okay? I mean, there's, there's elements there, you know, and same way with your two-year-old. The two-year-old knows there's certain things they're not supposed to do. But, you know, you, you slap your dog a little bit or you spray him with water or whatever you do, uh, and your dog, you know, feels bad, and then, you know, about 15 seconds later, uh, nothing ever happened. The dog's bouncing around. Same thing with your two-year-old. Now, human beings, of course, are much more complex than animals. They have a moral center that animals don't have. It's part of the fact that man is made in the image of God. God is spirit. And animals don't have spirits. Animals are bodies and souls, but animals don't have spirits. Man is body, soul, and spirit. That's why the Apostle Paul would say, May your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So man... Man is not an animal, and man has a moral center. Now the question is, is, when does that moral center kick in? Apostle Paul, when he is talking about the system of law in Romans chapter 7, how the system of law doesn't justify, and how there is a, a system of faith, the faith of Christ really, that he talks about in Romans chapter 3 and Galatians chapter 2 and other places. The system of faith coming in, is different from the system of law. And so he was delivered from the system of law by being immersed into Christ. Okay. And so he's you know, dead to the old master, so to speak, or dead to the old spouse, and joined to a new one, to Christ who is raised from the dead. As he began to discuss that, at one point he says, I was a once alive apart from the law. But when the commandment came, sin became alive and I died. And when he's using the live there, this is Romans 7, 9, as I mentioned. Uh, when he uses a live, that means in fellowship with God. When he uses dead, that means apart from fellowship with God. It's just like God told Adam. He says, the day you eat that fruit, that day you die. And Adam ate the fruit, and he died. Now, he lived another 930 years. So it wasn't talking about physical death. It's talking about spiritual death that occurred in the garden. In the same way in Paul's case. Now, there's a period of time in his life when he was alive, that is, in fellowship with God. That means that uh, children are not born sinners, which is very critical. Okay, so, um, so there's a period in his life when he's not accountable. Okay, you have to know no sin in order to be accountable. Now, the context of Romans 7 is the particular sin that got Paul 
was the one that said, you shall not covet. Okay, he, he goes through and he said, I would not have known about coveting except the law said, you shall not covet. See, and that which was to produce life in me ended up producing death. So at some point he had to know what coveting was and he had to be mature enough to be able to covet in a, an evil way. See, the knowledge of good and evil had to be able to covet in an evil way in order to be accountable. So at some point then in Paul's life, he ends up being accountable and he's operating at, at a mature level. Okay. In Galatians chapters 3 and 4, there's a discussion where Paul talks that, you know, when a person's under the law, for example, the um, Old Testament system, he's under a tutor, a schoolmaster. And the purpose of the tutor is to lead him to Christ. Now, once he's uh, under the uh, under Christ, he's no longer under the tutor or under the schoolmaster. Now in that context, he talks he uses an illustration. He's talking about the whole human race, but he's using a, a personification illustration to make the point. He said uh, a person, for example, uh, is under guardians and managers until the date set by the father. And what he's talking about is, the, let's say uh, you've got a person growing up, they're going to inherit an estate. And the dad dies before the child is old enough to manage the, the estate. The idea being then the guardians and the managers are going to handle it until such times he, that he becomes of age. Once he becomes of age, then he can take responsibility. Now, Paul's using that to point out that as long as the system of law is in, pl in place, that mankind as a whole, starting with the Israelites, Mankind as a whole is not prepared for the responsibilities of sonship in Christ. See, so it says there has to be a, a development process there that God's bringing man through in order to prepare them for the responsibilities of Christianity. So you can see in that context of, of Galatians chapter 4, then that the individual is going to have to be at a mature enough level to be able to manage their own life. In other words, they have to have the capacity to live on their own, be able to handle their own finances, uh, be married if necessary. Um, all those sort of things are of what are factors that feed in there. Now, when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt and uh, as they crossed the Red Sea, God held everybody 20 and above accountable. Now, some people would think that that's the lower age, but that's actually kind of an upper limit. If you think about it, every, by the time they hit 20, in Israel, they were accountable. So someplace there, mid-teens, late teens, um, in there, you know, and every individual is different. They mature at a different rate. Um, some people, of course, are never going to hit an age where they're going to be accountable. They just don't have the, the mental capacity for that, and so they're special children of God forever. But uh, anybody that's old enough to function well, their, their brains function well, the, the housing inside, uh, you know, the, the body, as long as that's working well enough, that individual is going to be held accountable at some point. But for obvious reasons, the scripture is not going to put an age on that because some people are never going to hit that age. And so it's not eight, okay, it's, it's, it's not 12, um, but it's going to be where a person crosses that line. And Individually, people know when they went from little girls to big girls. And uh, they went know when they went from little boys to big boys. And they, uh, all of a sudden, they're not, they're not functioning in a state of innocence anymore. So like I say, that's going to be generally middle or late teens. It's going to vary. You know, some, some societies uh, that gets pushed earlier for girls in particular not uncommon for in some places for girls to be married at 12 or 13 years old. Obviously they're going to have to have a mature level in order to be able to function that well. So the scripture is not going to put an age on it, but it's going to put a maturity level on it. And, and so that's where, since God puts it there, um, that's where we're going to have to put it. And it's going to have to be the individual's decision. There isn't a dad that can say, okay, it's time for you to be immersed. There's no mom that can say, oh, I wish you would get immersed and then I could quit worrying about you. 
It, it's going to have to be that individual's decision driven by the fact that through the law comes the knowledge of sin. When that knowledge is strong enough and the conviction is strong enough that that individual has to do something about it, that's when they're ready and not until.